Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Battle of the Welcome in to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I am Zach, joined by the Lita Adebayo to my John Economist. Wow. Mr. Mike. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. I was trying was to think good. on the fly, and it, it's a it's a two for reference, because last week we talked about Peacemaker. We did. Mm-hmm. Granted, those two characters do not appear in the comic, Yeah, but they do appear in the TV show. Which yeah. we will talk about some at the towards right. the end of this episode after we get done with our character for the day. I think it's a really good tie to Suicide Squad. I think they've done a good job it's, there. It's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, hang on. We are going to talk about that. This is also, though, the only time I'm going to say this. If you haven't seen it and you don't want to hear about it, know that it comes at the end because we're just going to talk about it all. Yeah. Yeah. But. That's fair. Until we get to that point of the show, I have another character. Yeah. For us to dive into. I'm excited first, about this one. First of all, I guess let's get. um. I don't know what I was doing, jumping right to the character. I know how the show works. We usually, <laughs> you know, BS for a little bit before we do that. Right. Uh, so apologies, I guess, to your Titans not being in the. That's ah, all right. Like I say, if you if you get nine sacks and you can't uh, you can't win a game, then something ain't right. Yeah, and uh, then you texted me a statement, which is funny enough and true for both <laughs> Titans and Texans fans in a way. I assume it's just that the Oilers prepared me for that, which mm-hmm. is. Is is right on. Yeah, um, grew up grew up a Houston Oilers fan, and uh, uh, disappointment was uh, the name of that game. That's true. So then, obviously, if you were a Houston Oilers fan, you're probably a fan of this show too, and you get how disappointment because <laughs> they go hand in hand, <laughs> comic hand books and Houston hand Oilers. Hand. Oh boy, or, or well, or at least listening to us <laughs> and being, oh man, if if yeah. only I just weren't so good at the self the uh, self deprivation. <laughs> My. Um, you know, my self-esteem might be a little bit better, but either way, uh, I just felt I'd, I'd ask to check in on you with the time. Oh, there, no, but. we're good. We're good. We're good. You know, uh, it, it, it comes with the territory. There's always next year. That's true. You know, that's and, until we all die. I think, yeah, so. <laughs> I think that that can be your response for anything. If, sure. You know, it's, yeah. there's always next year. Well, you and I had that talk uh, just a little while ago about how sports becomes life for people. Oh, yeah. And, and these people on this field could not care less about you and I. No. And so, you know, it's not like my grandma died or, you know, yeah. my dog got run over or anything. It's I mean, freaking sports yeah. game lost. I, I, I get that it's a game, but yeah. if people were cheering me on at work and I messed up, like, <laughs> that's right. I'm more concerned about what I did there on the field That's than right. them cheering. Right. So, yeah. but yeah. Uh, enough sports Ooh, talk. I guess we filed it incorrectly. <laughs> it would help if you didn't look over my shoulder, Shannon. <laughs> That's right. Um, Shannon. I don't know. It's the first name I could come I up it. with. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're a Shannon out there who doesn't look over people's shoulders, mm. then that wasn't directed towards you. Then you're different than all the other. You're, you're a different That's Shannon. Right. <laughs> yeah. So a good kind of shame, let's man. go ahead and this is going to be a callback in a sense. Yeah. Just because we've talked about uh crack comics. Crack comics. It was a yeah. thicker comic book mm-hmm. that they put multiple stories in. It was kind mm-hmm. of like a collection of different stories. Like an anthology. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we had brought up crack comics before because that is where Black Condor first appeared. Black Condor. And we remember how great Black Condor was. The man that taught himself to fly. Yes, and yeah. to communicate with birds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, pretended to be a... And monks. Uh, yeah, and pretended to be a U.S. senator and just that's basically right. takes that that's dude's right. wife. That's right, sure. Yeah, And the, and her father yeah. knows and is cool with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, he's much better. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like your previous husband, but now <laughs> it took care of itself. Yeah, it's right, yeah. 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 Uh, another character. Did, did, did we have grandchildren? No, 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 no. no that's no, fine. No, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another uh comic character to come from those crack comics, mm-hmm. which were all produced by Quality that DC ended up buying. What kind of uh, what kind of time frame are we talking about here? We are talking about the 1940s. Again. All right, fantastic. And everything was good in the 40s. It was. Is the what what I read in my history book? That's what I remember. Yeah. yeah, it's like it was bad. There yeah. was like war. Oh no, that well, was in the forties too. All people were equal. Everything was. Oh great. Yeah. yeah, no. That if you could go back into a time where everything was on the up and up, <laughs> it was the forties. Yeah, can't get enough of those flappers. <laughs> well, I thought that was the twenties. Maybe it was. I don't know. 
Eh, can't get enough of those old flappers. <laughs> <laughs> or those really young hippies. That's true. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Baby hippies. Yeah. So, uh, Madame Fatal is the character we're going to talk yeah. about today. Yeah. Ooh. And we and we did uh, go back and forth whether it's Fatal or Fatal. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to assume it's Fatal, fatal just because yeah. it's, you know... Uh, Madam, I, it could be Madam Fatal. We don't want the French Madam. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to use the word correctly. They, they tell me I'm mispronouncing it, but it's up to you. Madam Fatal, Madam Fatal. I'm, I'm going to go, go with, with Fatal. On, I'm going to go with you on Fatal. Uh, it yeah. was created by Art Pinajian. Oh, P I N A J I A N. Oh, then it's definitely Fatal. Yeah, Pinajian. Um, Pinajian. If I butchered that, I do apologize, but wanted to give credit to where it was. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you about this character. Yeah, because. I'll put it like this. So, Madame Fatal appeared in Crack Comics issue number one through 22. Okay. Nice little run. Mm -hmm. The problem was, oh, here we go. The spelling of the character's name has sometimes been given as Madame Fatal. Madame Fatal with the E. Like, it's spelled all the different ways, so they didn't even know how to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, But this comic did not do so great upon its release. And after the story kind of wrapped up, they quit doing it. Uh-huh. And I can explain to you why I think very simple. <laughs> First, let's focus on the powers and abilities. And as I showed you, yeah. Madame Fatal is an old woman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, we're talking 70s, probably. 80s. 70s. Oh, 80s. I mean, she, she looks Wolf. old. Okay. But she has no powers. But willed, she wielded a cane as a weapon and was a skilled actor and master of disguise because Madame Fatal is not a woman. Yes. It is a man dressed up as an old woman. Okay, so uh, I, I, I'm i sorry. I got a little ahead of you here, and I, I did look up something, and it <sighs> popped up. Yeah. Um, I try to bury the lead, and Mike goes is, and finds it. This is pretty fantastic. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, so I picked Madame Fatal. <sighs> Because uh, Sorry, I just, I just showed him a picture of uh, an episode or a, uh, a issue of Undercover Crossdressers. <laughs> Again, the 40s were a different time. Yeah, it was a weird time, sure. Where we can make a superhero just because a dude wears women's yeah, clothes. Yeah, And, and you got to make him old. Really, yeah, it's not really. <laughs> so the background behind this, because it does yeah. take a little explanation. Uh, sure. So Richard Stanton is Wait, the guy. Wait, this takes a little explanation? A little bit. Just <laughs> okay. a smidge. All right. Richard Stanton. Yeah. Right. He's um, he makes like the he gets wealthy playing the stock market in the Mm. 30s, which everybody will know (laughs) is right after the Great Depression. I'm sorry. I almost vomited my coffee. I know. (laughs) But everybody's mad at him because he's able to, you know, create wealth. The reason everybody's mad at him is because they're stuck in a depression and somehow he can make money while they're having to wait in bread and soup lines. That's why he, he rents potatoes. He's also an actor and like a stage actor. Ah, here we go. But through, I guess, people being jealous of him in a sense. Yeah. He becomes the target of a local like crime gang. <laughs> okay. Or crime syndicate, sure, whatever you want to sure. put it. Trying to get his hot stock tips. And his daughter is kidnapped. Oh, no. The shock of their kid being kidnapped ends up giving his wife a heart attack. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she ends up dying. Wow. So he is now. Story so far. Richard is now a widow. And his daughter has been kidnapped. Richard is now a widow. Er. <laughs> is now a widow. Well, er. I mean. I'm saying uh, Madame yeah. Fatal is a widow. Well, that's what but I'm Richard's yeah. a widower. Yeah. My bad. Okay. All right. No, it's not your bad. It could be either way. It's like Fatal so, or Fatal. He comes up with this plan to infiltrate the gang. He Oh, he quits doing theater. I'm sorry. He, mm-hmm. he, he's decided, like, sure. the stage is too much with all I have going on in my yeah, life. Yeah, right. So he decides, you know, that hey, the best way for him to infiltrate, I guess, these shady people mm-hmm. is by dressing up as a harmless old lady. Okay. So far, this sounds like a uh, uh, Elmer Fudd plot. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. 
he finds out and I'm just I'm just reading the basic thing here cuz we don't yeah. really need to get into no specifics because probably not the weeds here. Yeah, uh we just need to focus on what's going on with this character. Uh through it takes him 8 years, right? Okay. He's looking for his daughter for 8 years. All right. Trying to find her dressed up as an old woman. You would think maybe he would think mm, maybe a different disguise would help me. Mm-hmm. But I guess he sticks with it. Yeah, you, you got to figure it's some like you know, if it's eight years, maybe at year five, you you start to doubt a little bit, you know? Oh, yeah. But well, no, he's uh, like, should I be one of those organ grinders with a monkey? Maybe maybe that'll be better. Should I go back to theater? Yeah, I could be use yeah. Hamlet. Did you know that actually in stage productions of mm-hmm. Hamlet, they use real human skulls in a lot of cases? Really? Like people will. I don't know if like they will it away or ask mm-hmm. like as a, mm-hmm. you know, like artsy people. Like, can my skull be used in a production of? Oh, wow. Yeah. That is that's true dedication, right? Yeah. There. Sorry, you know, that my, was off the well. My wife and I had had the discussion the other day about what happens to us when we die. Oh and, yeah. And uh, she she wants to be cremated, and uh, she goes, "Well, we both want to be cremated." And I said, "Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to be cremated." I said, "I've told you before, I don't want to be cremated. I want to be donated to science." Yeah. I said, "If you can get twenty bucks for me, get it." <laughs> you know. I mean, that's great. <laughs> we gotta go by and she, uh, see you in one of those uh, the human life Heck exhibits yeah, they man. have where they. Yeah, I'm good with that. I don't give a. I won't care. It doesn't matter. You're dead. No, I won't care. Yeah. Uh, my wife has talked about there's some sort of like you can bury yourself in a mushroom bag and it just organically like. <laughs> that sounds great, too. Somebody eat me. You know, she <laughs> she'll sporadically listen to this yeah. and then she'll come and tell me. Oh, no. And, but she skips episodes. Yeah. And so we'll wait and see if this is one of the ones she does. Because she'll be like, you're going to make me sound weird. It's like an Easter egg. I'm going to start. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what I should start doing. Because I'm like, oh, do you listen? She's like, yeah, I listen. I'm going to start just uh-huh. peppering things in uh-huh. that she does not yeah. want me to tell people. I make uh, I make training videos for here. Uh-huh. Uh, the different editors and things like that, yeah. you know, on, on how to do things. And I'll always plant something in there so I can I can see if they really watched it or not that's funny the last one had a smoke break in the middle it was just <laughs> like you get to the middle of it and it's just a guy on the street going just just hacking and it says smoke break smoke break and then it just goes on to the rest of the video i will say i don't know why this always is funny to me but we had super cold weather yeah this last week mm-hmm. and uh where i work like people get breaks and so the smokers yeah they all huddle together yeah. and when it's super cold they just puff super quicker yeah it's just like yeah all right and instead of like you know i remember those days but they'll yeah. still I, the dedication is what i'm i just remember the the my fondest memories of smoking and I, I kids don't smoke but my fondest memories of smoking is the fact that i got 42 breaks a day you know i mean that's yeah. really what it was yeah no yeah i uh and all then, i all i did was and then I, I lost I, a lot well i dipped <laughs> and then i ended up quitting it but that was just disgusting yeah, so that's rough don't do that either, kids. No, don't do it, kids. Um, this has been a word from a, Mike and Zach. Use a vape Keep like in, the cool guys. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure that you just get all the stuff that's not tested. Think about that. Think about how full circle that's come, like like with the vapes and stuff. And mm-hmm. he, You know, we were all smoking to be cool, yeah. right? I mean, that's why anybody starts, yeah. honestly, because you know somebody who smokes or you see somebody smoking yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know, and so you started smoking. You get addicted and all that, but it's but it's supposed to be cool. Now you get these kids with these giant friggin' vapes, and they're all puffing something that smells like bubble gum. Yeah, it's just the craziest. It is, but I will say taken. that that's so much different than I wish that we had vapes then though, so my dad could vape in the house and my clothes didn't smell yeah, like smoke all the time. That's true. Mine but, was mine was pipe smoke. Oh, my dad smoked a pipe. He did. My dad did that for a little bit, so I got to see him do like the you know the pipe cleaner yep. to clean out and get it all black, set. In the, black cherry. Ooh, Ugh. yeah. It's gross. Well, all right. Enough talking about how t- tobacco Quit use it, affected old man. our I'm childhood. I'm not getting your slippers. <laughs> all right. Uh, so he's looking for eight years, Richard is, yeah. for his, yeah. his daughter. And he finally discovers that uh, gangster John Carver oh. is the guy who kidnapped his daughter. Mm-hmm. Do you want to know why? Why? Because John Carver, or John Carver kidnapped uh, Richard Stanton's daughter out of revenge because Stanton married Carver's first love. Remember the wife that died? Uh, yeah. So let's think about this for a second. I'm going to kidnap my, just, just to make this work for our listeners, okay? You're Richard. I'm going to play John Carver, okay. mm-hmm. right? You married the woman of my dreams. Yep. You had a kid. I'm going to get back at you by and stealing that kid 
and yeah. forcing that woman to have a, or and causing that woman to have a heart attack. Wow. What don't you think I'd feel like a piece of shit after a while just to be like, "Oh, my first love, I you, inadvertently You would killed. think, you would think, but you've also <laughs> decided to kidnap someone. So That's you true. you have crossed a line. I think yeah. You, know? you Maybe, cross that you line. You kidnapped a child too. And then, I mean, it's not Well, let's just think of what all he caused. Yeah. John Carver might be just a villain who knows how to get things done. That's true. Because in one action, he took uh, the man's daughter, mm-hmm. it, which ended up causing his wife to have a fatal heart attack, mm-hmm. which then ended up causing this man to go crazy enough to dress up like an old woman to fight crime. <laughs> so if we're talking about That's success rate, story. I know. If we're talking about success rate, though, John Carver's doing pretty That's true. good. That's true. He's one for one. Um, or two for two, I guess. But uh, Stanton uh, ends up... Oh, it says Stan, uh, Stanton ends up bringing Carver to justice, but he failed to find his daughter, causing him to continue on to fight criminals as Madame Fatal. And uh, he's assisted by, I didn't get to this part, he's assisted by his parent named Shakespeare. Or, I'm sorry, parent named Hamlet, who will recite Shakespeare. He's got a parrot? Named Hamlet, who recites mm. Shakespeare. Uh, come on. And he later formed the Surefire Detective Agency with Tubby White and Scrappy Nelson. <laughs> You're just making this crap up at this point. Tubby White and Scrappy Nelson. Uh, wow. So, again, it only ran 22 issues. So People didn't care for it. I wonder why. <laughs> Even in the 40s, they're like, boy, oh boy, this is this is a real peach. Yeah, <laughs> well, like... It's- I, and it's not even. I love it when his old lady beats up the gangsters. Well, there's so much like, are you? I just don't understand how a man in his 30s yeah. can look so convincing yeah. as an elderly woman, especially mm. back in the 1940s when makeup is nowhere near what it is today. Yeah, but I think we've both uh, seen Miss Doubtfire and Tootsie, so I mean, it is possible. That is true. You know, that is true. Yeah, but all you got to do is hit yourself in the face with a pie, and you look like an old lady. Yeah. So, uh, Madame Fatal. Really, Richard Stanton did. Was there any sort of wrap up to this story? Did it? Uh, did it? Or it just? They end? just end up stopping it. it. Just stopped. It's May. Like here's funny. Uh, the funny thing is like, he's been brought up randomly mm-hmm. in DC since then, but he's like never been used again. But like, there's a scene where I'm trying to remember. I was reading about it where like, one of the sand. I guess the original Sandman dies. Okay. Um. Or one of them. I don't know. The DC version, not the Marvel yeah, version. Yeah, I got you. Um, and they're at the funeral. And one of the guys there is at the funeral talking about how everybody shows up. Or not a lot of people showed up. And he goes, it's almost as sad as when Madame Fatal passed and the cast of whatever play it says we're the only ones to show up. Oh, no. Oh <laughs> so God. he's dead in DC. You know, this is a really good segue mm. point. Uh, because I feel like we've entered into the James Gunn universe now. Oh yeah. Um, because if anybody could do a Madame Patal, it would story, be James. It Gunn. would be James Gunn. Which, while we're getting into, we we teased it at the first of the show, but we'll, let's yeah. go ahead and talk about the Peacemaker TV show because yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> the intro itself is so great. Yeah. Uh, you know it's what I, the best. you know what I love most when I watch this. Like obviously James Gunn's great, but the way he uses music and oh, everything. I love the fact that that this entire show is all hair metal. Yes, and it's real hair metal. Yes. It's not like they made it up or anything. No, 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 no. Like when he when he mentions choir boys. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's not a real thing. And then I looked it up. It's a real thing. It's really a thing. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what I love is that James Gunn gets a chance to play. <laughs> I guess some of his obscure favorite songs yeah, kind of in a way. Yeah. Like it's what I've always loved about. I don't know if I've ever told you this before. Um, I had an idea once when I was in college that I would love to find a job where I could be like a soundtrack producer for movies in a oh, way yeah. of like finding things that worked with different because mm-hmm. I thought and I still do that music can be like can add so much to oh, scenes and yeah. stuff. And James Gunn is a director that gets it. Mm-hmm. And so the way he shoots like the fight scenes with the music yes, playing underneath yes. it or every like how important it is to it is just fantastic. Yeah. Even the uh, episode four, which is probably more of a character building one, mm-hmm. that montage mm-hmm. at the end, like mm-hmm. it's great. Yeah. With, so he kills it with music. Um, so last last episode, we talked about Peacemaker and how I hadn't seen any of them. Yeah. 
I have since watched all four episodes that have been released. Uh, episode five comes out on Thursday. It does, every Thursday. Um, hats off to James Gunn for not releasing all eight at one time. Yes, it is uh, frustrating as yeah. a viewer, but it builds and builds. And, and it's kind of like, you know, when, when people now watch The Office or people now watch through Breaking Bad or something, I think, well, you're not really getting the same experience because I had to wait weeks, if yeah. not months, to see the next episode no, or whatever. I, you bring up Breaking Bad, and that's one of the last ones that I remember doing it with. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we had to wait week to week on AMC. And I remember when the finale came out, like, we actually got a group together. Yeah. And yeah. we made pancakes and bacon. Yeah. To yeah. Hawaii, like, you know, it's we had a second. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. second birthday. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it, it really added to the experience when yeah. you had to wait. I, you know, I, I, I love the fact that Netflix drops everything at once or whatever. As a viewer, a consumer mm-hmm. of content, that's wonderful. But... You can't really beat the days when you had to wait a week. No, and the thing is, too, that I think I've had this conversation with people before is there's a certain age that you get to of, mm-hmm. you know, people who watch TV and stuff now yeah. to where they don't, and they might know, but I don't think they can relate to the fact that new TV shows came out the night that it came out on. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't tape it because you that's weren't exactly, going to be home that's exactly right. or you didn't watch it. Yeah. You wouldn't see it. You were done unless it was a rerun. Unless, yeah, point. you'd have to yeah. hope. But it's not like you got to pick what rerun no, it was. No, you didn't. They'd run no. a rerun. You have to hope it was one of the most mm-hmm. recent episodes mm-hmm. you missed. And then the whole continuity of Battlestar Galactica was messed up oh, for yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Because I would just watch them on Sunday nights at Fox <laughs> right. randomly and yeah. get an episode here and an episode there. Yeah, yeah. Remember, I still remember speaking of Fox late at night when they would play. This was it was in syndication because obviously it was on HBO first. But when they would run the Tales from the Crypt, yeah, oh episodes, yeah, sure. I, that the Crypt Keeper always freaked me out mm-hmm. as a kid. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why. I just thought of that one. Yeah, it's a weird. He was a, a weird puppet. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. And now a word from our sponsor. But no. back to Peacemaker, who has no weird puppets. That no we've weird seen puppets yet. yet. Yeah. I, I would say that, that the closest you get is Eagly, his, his pet eagle, which, uh. again, with the James Gunn thing, I, I, props, hats off, whatever. Um, he's so good at using characters sparingly. Yes. When you think of Groot, when you think of Rocket Raccoon, when you think of uh, Eagly, I mean, all of these, they're, they're in it very little. But... It's all great timing, and it's and it builds these characters as like like these huge uh, like like big parts of these movies when they're only in it for seconds. Yeah, and you know? there's even scenes that they're not involved in that yeah. they make even yeah, yeah. yeah like the whole part where in the last episode where he's like where uh, Mern keeps saying Mern. that yeah which is which is a great yeah. last name for the, yeah. but where he's talking about how. We need to make sure our, our they're talking about when Vigilante goes back in jail. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you convinced Peacemaker's best friend to kill his dad? <laughs> and he corrects him. And he's like, no, his best friend's Eagle. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, his best friend's Eagle. Uh, there's a hu- he hugs him. I think one of the I died laughing when she turns around. She go, or when they pick him up and Eagle flies in the back seat. Yeah. Is that thing potty trained? And yeah. It's like, you can't potty train an Eagle. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, that, that kills their soul. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, John Cena is fantastic. John Cena is fantastic in this, and and I was I was talking to somebody about this the other day. He 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 plays such a good dumb guy. Yes, and here's what I will say: I am a big. I'm sure we've talked about it before, uh, but I am a massive wrestling fan, mm-hmm. and so obviously uh, I know you know like even The Rock and stuff like these guys beforehand. Yeah. I've seen them obviously. Sure. And it's two different breeds because uh, acting in movies is obviously a lot tougher than acting yeah. or whatever you want to call what I'm not mm-hmm. trying to, you know, just ask Vin Diesel. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not trying to knock the craft of professional wrestling because I love it. Mm-hmm. But uh, acting chops there compared to the next level is different. Right, right. Sure. But in a scene where from the two biggest guys that have come out of the WWE system to turn mm-hmm. into, I'll, I'll just say movie. Well. Movie stars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can 
take John Cena yep. a lot more here lately than yep. I can The Rock. Well, it, it, The Rock is oversaturated. It's it, he's That's everywhere. The big thing. He's everywhere, and then it's all of these things that you hear about, like between him and Vin Diesel, where neither of them want to lose to yeah. each other. So, so it's stupid. like con- yeah. contractually obligated, like. Yeah how tough he looks in these scenes and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I can't deal with all that and uh-huh. then see John Cena, who's acting like a complete dumbass, where it's like he doesn't <laughs> care. He doesn't, yeah. Like, And I get that, obviously, The Rock's to a point where he can be picky and choose. Sure, sure. Well, he's not very choosy. Let's no, put it that way. No, he, and, and, he is in a lot. Yeah, and John Cena doesn't have those same options because he's not yeah. on the same level. I yeah, get that. Sure. But it's a he's breath... He's getting close, though, man. It's a breath of fresh air yeah. to how... What you know, you hear stories of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, it's compared to that because there is nothing like we're slowly getting to point arts where Peacemaker's redeemable, right? But for the longest, he's not. Like yeah. that's not something you want to be like. Hey, you're gonna play a complete d bag, and eventually, you know, uh-huh. you get to that point. Uh-huh. And John Cena's like, I'm all in for it, and basically dives headfirst into it. Yeah, he really did. You know, I was not a big John Cena fan. As far as wrestling goes, I just it was past my time really no, of, I totally of watching that. it, you know. And he was more for the kids. Yeah, he was for the kids. And so um I didn't have a whole lot of faith in that. I figured, oh, he's just a rock knockoff kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. But seeing him in this, I am I am a huge John Cena fan now because the guy is doing a fantastic job. And you know, my wife, she is um she's big she likes these big movies, you know, um, uh, superheroes and Harry Potter and all that crap. Um, and, and it's all great, but, uh, she hasn't really watched Peacemaker because she wasn't the biggest fan of the new suicide squad because mm-hmm. it's so funny and all this stuff. It's not, you know, beat them up all the time. And then, um, this one, she's like, Oh my God, you know, shut up about it because I keep talking about it. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I was I was trying to explain to her that yes he is a big douchebag but you know why at this point oh yeah you know it's all explained why he's such an idiot and why he's so hard to hate yeah you know and, and then you get yeah you get the backstory and yeah then you kind of feel bad for the guy because he's obviously chasing something with his father that he's never going to get and and by the way what's the guy's name that plays his father Robert Patrick yeah. It's fantastic. God bless that dude because that is – you get a script delivered to you where you oh, are yeah. a straight-up 1,000% racist. Yeah. And you go, yeah, I think I can do that. You know, in today's climate, that's tough. Oh, yeah. And and James Gunn for writing this guy as someone you just hate. I mean, this guy is hated. Yeah. But he's still a strong influence in in, Cena's, in Peacemaker's life. Yeah. No, know? it's definitely um, – they're not – well, I think that character is very black and white, but yeah. like Peacemaker is more literally because he's the white dragon. <laughs> that's true. Is it white or red? White dragon. White dragon. Yeah. Uh, there's some obviously some KKK connection sure, there. A little, that. Yeah, you think? Uh, but um, that suit is badass, by the oh, way. Oh, it's a cool looking suit. I would love to see somebody in that it's suit. A, it's, it's, it's a terrible <laughs> villain. But it is it's a, a terrible villain, but it'd be fun to watch uh, him get get beat up. But I think that that's then part of that. You're starting to see that take a toll on him too, of him starting to realize how awful his father yeah. is as a person yeah. too. Well, and, you know, it's a thing with kids when people tell you that your parents are bad, oh, yeah. you're going to be the first one to defend them. Oh, for sure. It's when you grow up and you realize, oh, shit, maybe they are, yeah. you know. And he's just having that moment now. Yep, he that, really and is. We kind of get to see it. Um, so much depth in such a dumb dude, show. You exactly. Know? And there's so much, like, you talk about the depth. There was one thing even in the very first episode that I was like, imp- I don't want to say impressed that they included it. But the scene where after he's met the team kind of for the first time and yeah. he goes to the bar yeah, and Harcourt's there drinking by herself. Your and tits she's look, an, your tits look great in that shirt, sure. by the way. And, and he's like, that's not a sexist comment. Just so much. <laughs> but it's full of like, you know, stuff like that where you yeah. still. Yeah. But no, no. The first time where he goes mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. and she's just trying to have a drink mm-hmm. and the guys while they come over and mm-hmm. like hit on her and she. Right. She's a badass yeah. and just takes them all out mm-hmm. and then goes and sits back down again. Mm-hmm. And he's still just like still trying, trying to, to hit, hit on, on her and just the speech she lays into him. Yeah. And you're just kind of like, 
Harcourt is is a really good character. Oh, she's really she good. She really is, yeah. I don't know why she's so pissed off, but uh, I'm sure we'll get I'm it. I'm sure we're gonna learn, yeah. Yeah, but no, it's Because the, from from reading little stuff about the show, apparently she's gonna be in a lot of other things. So okay. yeah, it's it's I, it, we know she doesn't die. Okay. Or well, Wait, we don't other, know that other, I guess. Other D C things? Other D C things, okay. yeah. Apparently Gunn is working on another T V show now. Oh. I'm really hoping it's Polka Dot Man, but we'll see. I don't as long as he comes back for season two, which he said that he yeah. would if they yeah. dude, I've won a season two already. We're only halfway through. This show, it's great. Uh I'm trying to think who else we haven't gotten into. Uh Outside Dave is what I usually re- refer to a Steve yep. uh Agee Steve is. Agee. But yeah. our Agee, yeah, but he is yeah. fantastic as John Econ. I love Outside him in Dave. everything he's in. Because that was his new girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got you. No, he's the best. I love Outside yeah. Dave. Yeah. And he's like Press one if you want a chocolate chip muffin. And he's like, shove it. Dude, he's just so great. He's Him, the stupidest You know, thing there's ever. two guys that are on he that was on show. Sarah Silverman show, too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. He's been on a lot of yeah. stuff. Um, you know who Dan Harmon is? Mm-hmm. Dan Harmon has a show that's called, um, great, I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it. I think it. it's Rick and Morty is what you're well, looking he, for. Well, yeah, and Community. Oh, and, yeah, oh, oh it's something else. Yeah, okay. no, he has a lot of great shows out there. <laughs> yeah. but. No, he has an animated show where they all play D and D together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, it's not Harmon Town. Harmon Quest. Harmon Quest. There you go. But Steve Agee's been on that too as a mm. singing bard, and it's mm-hmm. one of the best episodes of that too. Like he's oh, just a hilarious great. guy. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I can't think of the girl's name who plays Lita out of bio. I know she's in Orange Is the New Black, but yeah. she's great in this. She's too. really good in it. Yeah. Like, and and to find out that she's uh, what's her name's daughter? Amanda Waller's yeah, daughter. Waller's that's big. Daughter, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's great. Vigilante's absolutely hilarious. Vigilante, um, one of the best, uh, parts of, I, I guess it's episode one when he finds out that Peacemaker has been, oh, the- he's out. <laughs> he goes, he goes into the, the, uh, alleyway yes. and he's kind of self celebrating, you know, Oh yeah. Peacemaker's out. Blah, blah. And some guy comes out that he works with and says, Hey, and he's like, oh, sorry, I uh, just found out my girlfriend's pregnant. That's why he's so excited. Yeah, he goes, him. oh, you got a girlfriend? Well, then why do you keep having me set you, trying to get me to set you up with my cousin? Yeah. He's like, oh, well, it's, it's not a for sure thing. But you're happy that she's pregnant. Oh, we're getting an abortion. Yeah, happy so we can get an abortion. He goes, he goes you're welcome to come. He goes, I, dude, I'm not coming yeah, to I'm your abortion. Com- <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, there's so many Dude, great I'm not lines in there. I'm not your portion. <laughs> Yikes! That my brother told me there's two kinds of. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many quotables yeah, from this that's yeah. so great. Uh, both conversations we've seen so far between Peacemaker and his dad's neighbor are mm. hilarious. Yeah. Also, uh, and I'm just. You know, this is a not safe for work warning for the next 30 mm-hmm. seconds because I'm going to quote him on here. But mm-hmm. I just think it's hilarious is when he's about to get out of the hospital. He's talking to the janitor. And he's talking to the janitor. Yeah. And he's like, I'm a real hero. And he's like, what's your name? And he goes, Peacemaker. But I ain't heard of you. Aquaman, that's a real hero. And he goes, what are you talking about? Aquaman fucks fish. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. But then he goes, would Froggy273 lie to me on Twitter? Pepe. Pepe. Oh, Pepe. Yeah. Pepe the Frog. Pepe the Frog 273 or whatever. Lie to me yeah, on yeah. Twitter. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, he says he's got a buddy that for 50 bucks, he lets Aquaman go back there and have his way with the sturgeon or whatever. <laughs> he's just, yeah. oh, it's so great. You know, one of the one of the other things in episode one is him sneaking out of the hospital and there's nobody chasing him. Yes. You know, <laughs> he gets in the car and he's like, yeah, but all right. Still, like, there's looking nobody, around the corner. there's yeah. nothing, you know. <laughs> oh, man. And he lives in a red, white, and blue trailer. That was it is so good. Hey, are you crying? No, I'm doing face exercises. Yeah. That's, that's why, why you have such a skinny, pathetic face. <laughs> or, well, speaking of that, I'll leave it with this because yeah. I don't want to ruin everything with the yeah, show. Sure. But when they, when Vigilante goes into the prison, they take his mugshot and he keeps trying to change his face. <laughs> he goes, he goes, that way he can't identify, identify me. me. <laughs> <laughs> he cuts off his toe. Oh, he yells at his face like, why did you use such a dull knife? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so very good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I look forward to these coming out, man. Oh, I mean, this man. is one of those things where I stay up late while everybody else is in bed. Oh, for but sure. It's just my wife. I same, man. Well, well same here. House, but, but yeah, no. Yeah. If if you have the chance. All right. Here, here's what I want, though. Last thing. Let's talk about our theories. Oh, okay. Okay. 
So what are the butterflies and what do you think's going on there? Because we found out that, and again, spoiler alert, but we found out that the guy running this team Mern is, is a, a butterfly. butterfly. Yeah. I think, I don't know fully what they are yet. Yeah. Um, I do think that potentially. And, and why did Peacemaker lie about killing getting the rid one of it. and keeping it in a jar? Yeah. Yeah. Which I was so afraid during his, uh, you know, drunken high cry mm-hmm. fest at the end mm-hmm. that it was going to get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, I think, and I have a theory and I could be completely wrong unless that's the beauty of theories Sure, is that Mern might be obviously either he's like infiltrated in somehow, yeah. or I think the opposite could be is that maybe somehow he's a good butterfly. Yeah. That's, that's where I think we're closer. I think there's good ones and bad ones. Yeah. And I think that, cause obviously even though they get to that point where it looks like their eyes glaze over right. and they. Right. Um, the guy who was the butterfly torturing them seemed to be able to like, you know, do whatever he, he had his own thing oh, that he yeah. ran still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if the butterfly is like controlling Mern's mind, he's just trying to fit in, yeah. or if it's one of those where he's a a good thing. I think obviously, um, I think we're gonna get a showdown. I don't know if it's gonna be here mm-hmm. at this season mm-hmm. or if it's gonna be later. I think we're gonna get conflict obviously directly between Peacemaker and his father. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And I think because he's a racist POS, mm-hmm. it'll probably be something to do with Adebayo. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And that they're... Well, I mean, he's of, already called the Asian girl chopsticks or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But they're already... Like, I feel like there's a friendship building. Like, they've kind of planted that foundation from the beginning when Vigilante told them that none of them were best friend material right i think that she's the one I told you they weren't best friend yeah, material. <laughs> because she constantly even to the others like kind of sticks up for him yeah and yeah. so i think that there's a bond that develops between the two of them and so that could lead if her his dad does something to her that could lead to a new kind of like there's there's also a thing with waller uh waller yeah. has a thing for peacemaker she knows something that other people don't know yeah i don't about know what peacemaker. That is, yeah i don't either i don't either but it's going to be fun to find out now i i i do if 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 there's one thing that i'm still questioning it's that room that opens up into a quantum space where oh, the yeah. guy where, where the racist pos makes helmets for peacemaker yeah i i need more information please because I need to know how that happened, what happened. I also want to know what happened with White Dragon. Why did he stop being White Dragon? Because obviously he can still defend himself and yeah. stuff. I, I just I I need some more backstory. I'm sure we'll you know? get it. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. We will. No, no, no. I'm sure we will. I just that no, that's I'm what I'm too, wanting because at this they don't point, explain you know? too much yeah, of it. Yeah, I want these backstories and and the fact that episode four goes into uh, a little more of uh, what a piece of crap this guy is and how he treated. Uh, Peacemaker as a oh, kid yeah. and how his brother died. I still want to know how that I, yeah, happened. Because I'm assuming that's whose death we saw at the end. Yeah. Yeah. With the foam and the yeah, mouth yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. It just, uh, good job, James. Oh, Gunn. for sure. Oh. Cause you took a character who at the beginning of this is just a <laughs> dumb you yeah. know, guy that you laugh yeah. at to where you actually kind of care for yeah. what he's going through this time. It's great. Also the latest episode, you can, you know, know how great the show is just by looking at the show titles. Cause it was called a chode less traveled. <laughs> Maybe maybe I'm a grower, not a shower. Dad. That's right. That's it. Are you comparing yourself to a dick? <laughs> no. Like as a person. As a person. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that show is great. So, I am uh I'm I'm really, really impressed. And uh if I didn't already pay for HBO Max, I would. Yeah. Oh, same here. Uh I think this is one of those that I might be able to go back and rewatch. Oh, too. I will. Yeah. Like it's just I that will. funny. Absolutely so, I will. Yeah. Because when I know the entire arc then I want to go back and watch oh, and it see from what beginning you, to yeah. end. So, so I do like the let's release them a week at a time. But when they're all out, I will and often go back and just watch, watch it in one big thing. Yeah. So yeah. if if you've listened to, we've come down to the end of the episode. If you've learned two things from this episode today, it's one: don't waste your time reading Madame Fatal comics. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We already told you the ridiculousness of that. Right. Two. Do go watch Peacemaker. Oh, please do. Because yeah. it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Welcome to our Peacemaker podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's just nothing else out there like it. No, not at all. And uh, it's great to have. And the beauty of it is, too, I'm trying to count month-wise, is it'll get me through February to Batman. Yep, that's true. That's so, true. which, yeah. the runtime, I'll just add some news at the end because it's comic mm-hmm. news. Sure, please. Um, you saw that the rating dropped for it. 
No. Is it R? PG-13. PG-13. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes sense because, yeah. obviously, with a movie and a uh, property like that. Yeah, I understand. That's such a big app. Sure. You, you want as many sure. people to see it as possible. Yeah. Uh, run, t- run time? PG-13s are not what they used to be, though. No. Also, there's no, a little true. bit more allowed in pg Thirteen. Yeah, yeah, because uh, all the Nolan Batmans were PG-13. Yeah, and so. and if it's if it's scary, like they're saying, then that's fine. I yeah. mean, I, I'm good. Run time? Right. Two hours and 56 minutes. It's the longest standalone Ooh. Batman movie. Yeah. Okay. But I'm holding out hope because the first like screenings that ha- came out yeah. that I read, the thing where everybody loved it, mm-hmm. they talked about it's basically a three-hour movie. Yeah. So that makes me think that maybe they didn't cut much, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm excited for I it. J- I got to play positive. So. Let me let me go back to, to one thing since we're doing news. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, maybe I'm an idiot. But I'm getting a little amped for Black Adam. I'm, no, I mean I don't know why. I can tell you I'm, why I'm not. We already kind of discussed well, it's, it because it's I'm the rock. the rock. Yeah, but I keep hearing things about this thing's going to be in it, that thing's going to be in it. It seems like James Gunn is kind of dropping some stuff about it too. Like I don't know if you saw, but there's an Easter egg where, by the way, Peacemaker. What's up with the gorilla getting out of the zoo? Oh, I saw that's that. That's going to be a big deal. Do you think it's Grodd? That's, uh, I hope so. But that's going to be a thing, right? Yeah. So the gorilla gets out, and then there's a cop there reading the newspaper, and on the newspaper it references the kingdom that Black Adam uh, protects. Oh, okay. I missed that. And then. so it's literally on the front of that newspaper. I didn't see it. I just no. I had to, you know, these Easter egg things that people well, that, release. That's another thing is the... Easter eggs of just references to other characters mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. is fantastic. We oh. got a Matter Eater Lad reference in the last Matter episode too. Eater Lad, yeah, I had to look that up to make sure it was a real thing. Oh, see, I've yeah. thought about doing him for the podcast before. Yeah, we should. At so this point. when so when he did that, that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I saw me at a Wendy's. He ate at Wendy's. No, dude, he ate a whole <laughs> he ate an Wendy's. entire Wendy's. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, I I love the fact that they they reference all the all the they do. good superheroes. But, uh, Batman gets a gets a skewering. Uh, oh, apparently Superman does too. Eventually. <laughs> oh, I don't doubt that. I because I, I read yeah. the quote where um what he says about Batman in this one. Apparently mm-hmm. DC pushed back a little bit yeah. on, and he was like, I'm as not, well they probably should have. Yeah, I'm not changing it. Like but he, nobody ever goes after Batman. As but far as he this brought goes. up the Aquaman part yeah. from episode one. Yeah. And he brought up something else from Superman that I haven't heard awesome. yet. He goes that he thought that they would, but they yeah. didn't. It was the Batman line. that got him. Dude. If, 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 if it is Grodd, then God bless James Gunn, even more than he, but you see, ever have. I guess, well, I guess All you got to do is put do a computer that. on his head. Well, no, he can do that because I was thinking they've had Grodd in the flash TV shows, uh, but with DC, their TV shows yeah, like that aren't yeah, related. No, no. Um, so I guess Peacemaker, this is where it's confusing with DC. I guess Peacemaker technically follows in the cinematic universe. Yeah. So we could be introduced to Grodd, the new Grodd. Right. So I guess it's something there. Maybe, maybe the new, maybe the new series he's working on is like DC villains. That would be cool. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so, um, I did see. Because other DC properties are getting in on the Peacemaker love. Yeah. I thought this was great. Have you yeah. watched any of the Harley Quinn animated show? No. It's absolutely fantastic. Really? Too. Yeah. I know that you're probably... I don't. It's think, a little more adult, right? It, oh, very much so. Really? Okay. Oh, Bane is the funniest in it to me. But it is very the same way. It's, you know, hmm. uh, a heavy adult show. Yeah. But hilarious. But What's it on? It's on HBO Max. Oh, okay. Um, well, maybe I'll watch it. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco from Big mm-hmm. Bang Theory yeah, Voices. I knew, I knew yeah, she yeah. was doing it. Yeah. But no, it's it's great. Um, but somebody posted a picture from the show, from the Harley Quinn show, of her mm-hmm. standing next to Batman. Mm-hmm. And then somebody drew like a new kind of of it, of her standing next to Peacemaker. Mm. Since technically they're both in the, yeah. uh, in the show Twitter, copied it and tweeted back. Looks like I have a hobby of standing next to people who've been emotionally crippled by their parents. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, so it's uh, well, shoot, yeah. Now you want to? Now I got to go watch a freaking cartoon. Dang dude, it. it's it's worth it though. So I was gonna let me just finish one thing on on the Black Adam thing. Mm-hmm. Before any of the James Gunn DC stuff, I thought Shazam was their best movie. Yes, I, I really I'm, did. Same, and same. it's because it's so much fun. It's just a fun friggin' movie you know it's it's fun to watch 
um um uh what's his name what's the guy that's zach levon yeah what, what was that show Chuck, I love Chuck. Chuck, man. Chuck was great. Chuck was my jam. I thought I thought he was like eighty years old at this point, but he did such a good job. Well, you know, Shazam, he played, it's so good. He played Kurt Warner in the latest Kurt Warner man, documentary. <laughs> Just saying, it came full circle. We started with football, we end with football. Exactly. No, I. It's it's the Shazam connection that gets me, and no, and, I, and it's because Shazam was always such a goofy character, right? Yeah. If you can take him and turn him into somebody that I like, I, I am super well, happy with I that. Well, I think yeah. why I like Shazam out of the rest. And it was done for like no money. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but Because uh, they couldn't even afford to get Superman in it. Exactly. Yeah. I think the reason I like Shazam is because everything else at the time had such a dark tone. Yeah. And it was like meant as like a family superhero movie in a way. And it was just a nice refresh. I, I understand that everybody loves Wonder Woman. And it was a good movie. That first one was first really, one was, really good. I didn't good. really second like the one second one that much. Butt. Yeah. But um, the first one was excellent. Mm -hmm. And it was such a mood change, right, from what they had been doing with the, with the goofy Supermans and all that stuff, right? Yeah. But Shazam, it was a family-friendly family friendly fun superhero thing that hardly anybody knows about anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never hear anybody talk about Shazam until mm -hmm. that movie came out. Let's not forget. He was uh, Mr. Marvel at one point in huh? time. That's right. And then you get the, the kids that are all Shazamites or whatever you want to well, call them. Helen Mirren is in the so freaking good. sequel of yeah. the Shazam movie. Yeah. I, so that's, that's why I'm looking forward to the black Adam thing. I, I think it's, it, it could be very cool where you got this really bad guy, now you've got cool Shazam and, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm an idiot. And maybe it turns out to be a no, piece of crap. It but, could be. But, but it, it the does. first Shazam was excellent. Oh, yeah. I love it. So, no, but, uh, until uh, until next week, everybody stay safe. Got it, God. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.